Um, just from the, the few conversations I've had with people who have family in China, it, it went from a situation where people couldn't pay their mortgages because they were locked down and they could not not go to work to a situation where they all have COVID now or know somebody who has COVID. What is the feeling on the ground about what has happened in China in terms of lifting the restrictions so abruptly? Yeah, no, I think you've captured a lot of that ambivalence, which is we've gone from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. And there's a little bit of whiplash here because this is what a lot of people have been waiting for. This was the moment if you were a business owner, you own a restaurant, you were related to the tourist industry in any way or the service sector, you were praying for this day. And then it all of a sudden came almost sooner than anyone had expected it. And so um, if you're one of these people whose livelihoods was taking a beating during this, uh, you know, three year long zero COVID lockdown, you're happy. But if you're one of the families who has an elderly person in the household, then you're probably not so happy about it because the likelihood is that, um, you know, grandmother grand, or your grandpa or whoever hasn't gotten a vaccine here in China, because that's the lowest uh, sort of population in terms of, of vaccination. And many of them, it's the winter here in China, it's cold, and many of them are in the hospital. If you go to any of them like I have in the last few days, they're, they're, they're a bit of a nightmare right now. And uh, you see people in the hallways because they can't get a bed with oxygen tanks and all the rest. So, you know, there's a lot of ambivalence and mixed feelings here, um, but, but certainly there's, there's been a lot of change. What's your take, uh, what are China Watchers' take on, on the management of this? Is this gross mismanagement on the part of the Chinese government? Or was this all part of a mastermind plan? Because it was sort of, a, sort of like a win-win situation, if you will. They responded to the protesters so they can say to the people that we responded to what you wanted, so they, they will win on that front. Or they can say, look what happened when we lifted all the restrictions that we had in place. This is what happened. This is why we had the policy in the first place. Yeah, you know, we just put out a story that really captures that second sentiment that you expressed there, which is that insofar as the censors in China are allowing criticism online, it's fingers pointing towards all these people who said we need to open up. And so there's a little bit of we told you so. Now look at this. On the other hand, there is a big question here of why China didn't do more to prepare. They had three years to do it. Um, it's not to say they were doing nothing, but vaccination rates could have been higher, especially among the elderly. And again, you visit any hospital right now, you go to the ERs or the ICUs, and you'll see. You'll wonder why more hasn't been done. And so it makes it makes a lot of people here think that their hand was forced, both economically, because things were just getting so bad, and epidemiologically. They just couldn't stop this particular strain because this, this Omicron variant, as we all know, is much sneakier than its predecessors. And no stockpiles of medicines or equipment, as we were reporting earlier, Jonathan. But, you know, just a week ago, people were venturing out. There were images of people out shopping and ice skating, and you're there on the ground. You're living this every single day. But I'm wondering if now people are starting to self-isolate all over again, even without some of these restrictions, and what you think that will mean for the upcoming Chinese New Year, which was you know, part of the catalyst for doing this in early January so that people could travel for that holiday. Yeah, no, it's it's a great point. And, and actually, I think it varies depending on where you are in the country. I'm in Beijing, and I can tell you that from early December when these measures first lifted, Beijing immediately became a ghost town because I think, anecdotally, because we don't have statistics, China stopped reporting statistics on daily infections and on deaths. Um, you know, I think Anecdotally, everyone will tell you that Beijing seemed to get it first, and everyone was wiped out. I don't know how I managed to be spared, but almost everyone I knew in the capital here was out for about a week to 10 days. And you saw images from Shanghai and further south in China where people were packed in the malls and the restaurants and everything, and now it's sort of the other way around. Here you go out and restaurants are full in Beijing, and in Shanghai, talking to my colleagues and my friends down there, nobody's out on the street. So, you know, you have a little bit of a mixed picture throughout this, this very big country.